This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, December 16th. Fans of Marvel rejoice. It is the day that Spider-Man No Way Home comes out. We cannot wait for this tonight. I am Jerem Jordan with a man more excited for Spider-Man tonight in theaters than the Independence Bowl, Jason Shepard. Look, and, and, and you know, I will, I'll be honest with you. This movie comes out first before the Independence Bowl. Yes. Very, very interested in the Independence Bowl. But this yeah. just happens. <laughs> what in the, what in the world? Hold on, hold on. Biggest plot twist. It's Wait, Kiki. It's Kiki. It's me. I thought it was Ghost for a sec. <laughs> what? I thought it was Miles. Peter Parker. No. What's up, dude? Uh, welcome. Welcome to the multiverse <laughs> where I am Spider-Man. In a full Spider-Man suit. Um, yeah. Now. I, I own this. Now, thanks for startling us. <laughs> you own You're that. welcome. Great. Yeah. And you said on Instagram that's a boys' medium. It is a boys' medium. Not yes, a men's they were. Medium. No, not a men's. A boy. a boys. Oh, I'm glad medium. you said that because when you said boys' medium, I had in my mind men's medium. Yeah. No, a men's medium would be much larger. Yeah. Um, they did not have boys' larges. That was yep. preferred. But you know, <laughs> that you don't get what you want. Okay, all the so time. you you have seen this movie. I have. Last night. Okay, yes. We're not. Don't no, no spoilers. A word. Listen. Don't even. I don't want to even see your facial expression. I don't even want to know. Spider-Man is actually in this movie, okay? I don't even want that spoiler. They, they could trick us like that. That's Marvel-like, right? To just make it a different movie. Um, I would never say even if it was good or not. I respect Thank I you. respect it too much. See, I'm Thank fine you. with that. He's the one that gets really... Oh, I, he is, but I he's get, not alone. He gets really get temperamental out. about stuff like I'm that. I'm temperamental about a lot of things, Jason. Yeah. Spider-Man is justified. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank Amazing. you. Amazing. Thank you. Enjoy the Thank show. You, Kiki. Good day. You can watch uh, BYU Sports Station right now with Kiki Solano yes. on the interwebs. Oh! 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 It's a tie-in. We're off to a great no, start. No, no, no. Let's no. go. No? <laughs> that sound effect is horrible. <laughs> it's a show lineup. We will go into the Spider Verse and discuss whether there was a timeline this year where BYU would have made a, a New Year's. We're story. embracing this multiverse just, fully. Uh, listen, if you're not like full Marvel, that's where we're going today, okay? Just so you know, just so you're warned. Wide receiver coach Fessy Satake goes one-on-one with Spencer Linton about the signing class of receivers and the bowl game, plus women's hoops coach Jeff Judkins discusses his 8-1 and start. By the way, Washington State, 8-1 and as well. They're pretty good. Fun matchup Saturday. And Tyler Algier has a, a hamburger. What? We'll show you the hammer. That's a great name. I could go for a hamburger right now. Seriously. Seriously. Very hungry. Very hungry. Right. But first, before some hamburgers, some headlines. <laughs> BYU football announced 19 signees to its 2022 recruiting class yesterday. Of the 19, 10 are on offense, 9 on defense. And one of those players is linebacker Michael Wilson, who just had to give a shout out to his famous sibling. My name is Michael Wilson. I'm a linebacker from Corner Canyon High School, and Zach Wilson's my little brother. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen a response, by the way, from Zach on that. Uh, that may have been a private it response. Came, it just came out. <laughs> that was for us. It, he said that for it, us. Uh, it may have been a private response from Zach to his little brother, Micah. Now, or let, older brother, Micah, depending on how you want to say it. meaning, like, shorter, less. Uh, you know, he's obviously uh, older. I love yeah, that the love Wilson, that. the pipeline is is strong oh. at BYU now. I love oh, it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely and love it. And it's maybe not over. And Yeah. And you know who else loves it? Uh, not the Wilson pipeline, but the overall uh, signees that happened yesterday. That would be head coach Kalani Satake. And he said the thing that he's most excited about is the speed in this class. By the way, we got some fast guys. And, and I should remind everybody that these, these, these times that you see on the track times, that's actually their, that's their junior year, so a lot of these guys are, are, are going to be faster than what we saw already uh, on the track times from last year. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see these guys run. It's all about the speed, Jerem. That Big 12 speed. So you got to get that Big 12 speed, it's yes. already happening. It's game day Eve Eve today as number 13 BYU prepares for Alabama. Birmingham. Saturday on ABC. Cougars are favored by a touchdown. BYU has been axe throwing, game show playing, and practicing in Shreveport. Having a grand old time as the Cougars try and go 11-2 and two and finish in the AP Top 10, Jason. Tyler Algier was named a Phil. I knew I was going to do it. <laughs> I knew a Phil Steele 
fourth team All-American. Phil Still. Phil Still, uh, fourth team All-American. the deal, man? And one of ten Cougars named to the Phil Steele All-Independent <laughs> Team. Algier finished the 2021 regular season ranked number one among independent teams in touchdowns, rushing yards, rushing yards per game, scoring per game, total points, and all-purpose yards. I would say, dare I even say, a breakout season. Oh, my gosh. Get the yak <laughs> out of here. Danny Ainge is back no. in Utah as the new CEO and alternate governor of the Utah Jazz. It's like minority owner. They're not calling them owners anymore. Governors. After 18 years with the Boston Celtics, he joins BYU alum and enthusiast Ryan Smith in the front office. These are amazing photos we've dug out. He's just hanging out outside the will. It's great. Good stuff. I love man. it when my worlds collide, when you have jazz and yeah. BYU coming together. Yes. I just absolutely love One it. One happy camper. Yes, very, very happy. Michaela Coulihan was named National Player of the Year by Top Drawer Soccer. Coulihan finished the season with 20 goals and 16 assists. Also, congratulations goes out to Cameron Tucker, who just signed a two-year deal with Gotham FC of the NWSL. Tucker was also named to Top Drawer Soccer's second team National Best 11. Those two are unbelievable soccer players, now both professionals. So Cam Tucker wasn't drafted. Now she's a free agent. She signed. Signed a two-year deal, yep. The coolest named team in the world. Gotham FC? It's amazing. Uh, this just in, by the way, the MPSF men's volleyball preseason poll is out. The coaches have voted Pepperdine as the preseason favorite, then UCLA, then BYU in third. So uh, I probably agree with that, given who BYU lost. It'll be a, a different uh, kind of year, perhaps a rebuilding year. Davide Gardini and the fellas is what it is this year. <laughs> tonight, Daniel Sorensen, Zane Anderson, and Andy Reid of Jason's Kansas City Chiefs play the Chargers tonight. Uh, Thursday night football. Uh, it's Zane's second game in the NFL, by the way. He had seven snaps in week one against the Browns. Great to see Zane upgraded to the 53. Love to That's see super it. Super cool. Yep, absolutely. Hashtag Chiefs Kingdom. And uh, track and field on, signed man. Trayton Anderson out of Dillon, Montana. Anderson is the 2021 state champion in the 300 meter hurdles and the 2019 state champ in the 4 by 400 relay. Shout out to uh, Caitlin Jenny. I believe she's from Dillon. It's the same hometown. Who same same city. Yeah. yeah exactly. Saw her a couple months ago. I haven't yeah. seen her in a while, though. Yeah, yeah. She was actually here a couple weeks ago, so that's not good. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. All right, tonight, Spider-Man No Way Home premieres in theaters. Unless your name's Kiki and you got access last night, which we were not told about. A little butthurt about that, but that's all right. So if we look into the multiverse, okay, is there a timeline out there this year with mm -hmm. BYU football, Jason, where BYU would have made the New Year's Six? First of all, we've missed... And I want to apologize for everybody involved in this show that we did not catch this sooner. What? Can I reread the question as it should have been written? Yes. Okay. So if we looked into the multiverse, is there a timeline out there where BYU makes a New Year's Sinister Six oh, bowl game snap. this year? Nice. We I missed it. It was obvious. Yeah. It was staring us right in the face. Yeah. We missed it. Well... We missed it. That's why we're at 10 a.m. and not 5 p.m. Okay? <laughs> yes, there is a timeline. Yes. And it very, it was oh so close to being this timeline. <laughs> um, I always will go back to the Boise State game. And yes, Bronco fans, you got your revenge. You're looking at the camera like they're watching. BY, they are watching. They all watch. I thought it was just some Utes. No, it's all Utes that watch. Oh, oh And wow. most everybody else. Uh, yeah, Bronco fans, you, you got us. BYU took it away from you last year. You got your revenge this year. That was the game. And the reason I say that was the game is because that was more in BYU's hands than Oklahoma State coming up short. BYU had nothing to do with that. You can yeah. say that if Oklahoma State gets one more. What do you mean BYU had nothing to do with that? Jeff Grimes and Eric Patel were there. <laughs> well, sort of. <laughs> but, I, I mean, they control that, that was BYU's fumbles in the game is yeah. what cost BYU in that game. That's the one that you look back and say that whether you believe BYU had a realistic chance or not, I do believe they had a realistic chance. There was still going to have to have a lot of things that happened, but it was there this year if, if I, I believe if the Boise State game doesn't turn out the way it was, especially with the way Boise State ended the year, they were not a good football team, and, and so that, that loss got worse as the season went on. 
To answer the question, in the infinite timelines, uh, if we're talking multiverse Marvel theory here, of course there's one where BYU goes undefeated somehow. I just don't think it's that probable. I, I think we need to be careful, and I talked about this midseason of um, Bill Connolly came out and said BYU was plus 1.9 wins, like more. Uh, uh, he almost quantified it as like luck. I think that luck can be quantified as uh, takeaways. BYU's ability to not give it away and do a good job of taking it away made it so BYU wasn't an 8-4 and four regular season team, probably, in an average year. BYU was 10-2 and two because Jaron Hall doesn't turn the ball over very much, as Aaron Roderick has talked about. And that is to BYU's credit. There was one game where it got away from BYU, and, yep, BYU lost that game. I'm not sure with one loss whether BYU makes a New Year's 6 anyway, but they almost did. Like, if Baylor loses, right. there's a chance BYU's going to a New Year's 6 right now. But to think that you can have it all – and the next game, it's like, well, consider that in the Utah and Arizona State games, BYU did an excellent job of taking care of the ball. What if BYU turns it over against Utah like it always does? Well, then BYU maybe loses that game. But Cam Rising didn't play in the game. Air run. Aaron Rodgers. That was great, so by funny. The way. That is, that that is an unbelievable so funny. mic drop. I, I, I just think we need to be careful of, like, you can't have all of this stuff and even more positive. It's like, well, sometimes you got away. I think BYU, not got away with, that's not the right phrase, but like, took advantage of a couple of games where it took care of the ball, was positive in margin, and that made the difference in the game where there wasn't, there wasn't a fumble in the red zone where the other team scores and, and maybe wins. Like, if Tyler Algier doesn't make the play of the year, you know, he might lose that game. Like, let's, let's take into consideration that there were these what-if moments sure. where nice. that, that changed the course of the season. BYU was probably always going to lose the Baylor game. That was just – just Baylor was better. It's okay. You can tip your hat. Yeah, not, they, they were they were the better fine. team that day. That's fine. And I think they would have been most days. Like, that Baylor team's really talented, um, especially on the road there. Look, they and won the Big 12. They're good, right? They're really good. So, yes, is there one timeline where BYU, like, goes undefeated? Sure, maybe. But are we really going to be that greedy – to think that BYU went six and one against the seven power fives, unbelievable yes. season. This was close to as good as it could possibly get, in my opinion. I, and and that point, I hope the majority of fans are not forgetting. Everybody going into the season, uh, everybody we talked to said they would love if BYU got eight wins, nine wins. It was like just this unheard of mountain that BYU. Like if they got to nine wins. BYU's going to, in all likelihood, have 11. Which is insane. So the, so, so I hope that people realize, yes, you didn't go New Year's 6. Yes, you were hoping that you were going to get in a better bowl game. But you know what? This is a season in which BYU will be able to build off of for decades. And I'm not just talking about the wins and losses. Everything that happened in this season going into the Big 12, this will be a springboard for this program moving forward. There is no other way to look at this season than nothing but ultimate success. I think there's a timeline, too, where BYU goes 7-5 and five in the regular season. Like just The good news is coughs, we don't have to worry about that. Coughs it up, injuries to certain guys. The fact that Tyler Algier was healthy all year has really springboarded BYU into this opportunity. The way Jaron Hall played, the ability for Baylor Romney to come in, in you know, in a couple games. The, the defense getting enough takeaways. Caleb uh, Hayes' play on the last drive against USC, like, all these things came together. It was really awesome. There was a lot of great stuff from this season, and it was super validating to build off of last year and to validate, nope, look, so from zero power five to seven yes. and a Pac-12 championship banner. And BYU is going to be a P5 <laughs> officially in another season. Like in a year and a, a week or two, we're going to be talking about, well, the next season. After, after Saturday's game, BYU exciting. football officially has one more season as an independent. That's right. Scientific fact. Our question of the day. If you looked into the multiverse, is there a timeline out there where BYU makes a New Year's Six bowl game this year? What say ye in Voice of the Nation? This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Swoosh Life 59 on Instagram because the first 58 were taken. <laughs> yep, we play Boise on a Thursday or Friday with clear skies. Boom, no fumbling. We win, we go 11-1 and one and get a better bowl. Okay, so the weather taken into consideration in that answer. 
It was wet and rainy for the first quarter or two. Yeah, and there was no question out. that BYU was moving the ball, and then when the rain hit, it, yeah. it slowed it down. There was no, there's no, that, that's not a, that's not a take. That's what happened. You could see it. You already scored, uh, you know, two or three touchdowns very quickly in that game. Okay, at J Floyd three. Why didn't Boy State fumble two? At J Floyd three four one on Twitter. Yes, we were very they close. Had Hank Bachmeyer. That's it was. <laughs> Truly, Hank Bachmeyer, the difference. It wasn't <laughs> Cam Rising after all. It came down to a handful of games not going the way we needed them to. If OK State beats Baylor and a couple others go right, we could be enjoying the Fiesta Bowl. Or, you know, we could have not lost our homecoming game to Boise State. I I forgot it was a homecoming game. I actually did, too. It's, it's not like a thing that we care about that much here, I don't think. Not, li- not like Baylor, that's for sure. Okay, continue to weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, in the multiverse. Hey, but next time we face Baylor, we may get one of those cool uh, Cougar, the Sailor Coug helmets. Because they have next their year. Sailor. Yeah. Home opener, bro. That's what I'm saying. Let's Love go. it. All right. Coming up, BYU football players and ninja stars. Now that is a tease. Whoa. And wide receivers coach Fessy Satake on the signing class. Cody Hagan among them. As he talks with Spencer Linton about bull prep and signing day. This is BYU Sports Nation. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Sam Ree. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift cards, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. Place where new beginnings and second chances have room to grow. Where past and future are present, and your fondest dream is so close, you can almost reach out and touch it. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Get ready for BYU in the Independence Bowl by joining us on Countdown to Kickoff Saturday at 2 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. Uh, and the application? Uh, that would be Brigham Young University Television and the application. Yeah, that's what you always say. That's crazy. We're live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. Jerem Jordan, Jason Shepard, Kiki Solano was with us in a full Spider-Man suit. It was Spider awesome. Kiki. Spider Kiki? I thought she might be Ghost, you know? Gwen Stacy, no? No? No, apparently not. Pedro Parker? Let's go, baby. Okay, yesterday, Spencer Linton talked with uh, Fessy Satake, always insightful. Great recruiter. He's crushing it. Signing class, uh, chock full of excellent receivers that will play a big role at BYU. Soon and in a couple of years after missions, here's the conversation with Spencer and Fessy. Fessy, for those that don't know what signing day is like as a coach, how would you sum that up emotionally and physically? Because you probably don't sleep much. It's a uh, it's it's a uh, Christmas for us because um, you know everything is officially inked on paper or clicked or submitted, I guess, uh, with where we are with technology. But um, it's it's really exciting. You know, you feel the sense of. Uh, relief um you know you put so much so many hours and, and time and energy into recruiting these these unbelievable young men a lot of them who are you have to battle other schools with um some you feel a lot more 
you know, they're a lot better about getting. Um, but regardless, to know that they're official and all in, it's a really exciting feeling. So I would say for, for football coaches, it's a Christmas before Christmas. The overwhelming theme of this class, from what I could tell and from the interviews that you did before signing day, is speed. You got a ton of speed coming into the wide receiver room. What else makes this class unique? Just they're they're unbelievable young men. Like they they, they uh they're gonna be great leaders on this football team. They're gonna be guys who are gonna be super successful after um, football, whether they pursue their the NFL careers, um, and just whatever they do professionally, they've been raised by you know great families. They fit what we're looking for here. They're, they're people who are automatically gonna uh, be comfortable with the culture that's been set, and that's what we're we're big on here. Kalani's done a great job of this culture of of love and learning, and 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 you know enjoying your time here and being disciples of Christ. And, and it's critical for us to find great athletes, but guys who can kind of just who, who can smoothly transition into that culture and each one of these guys I you know we that's that's the number one question we got to ask our, ourselves before how how fast are they what's their hundred time and what are their statistics are these guys can they fit here um here at BYU and we think all these guys obviously are ones that um will transition very well into this culture I know all of the individuals and especially the receivers that you recruited are important cogs and that you clearly love all of these guys but I do want to focus on Cody Hagen specifically just because I was very impressed with how his demeanor is and his approach to football and life. And he was the Gatorade player of the year in the state of Utah coming from corner Canyon, which is becoming a powerhouse football program in the state. And I've heard from Aaron Roderick that he could step in and participate and contribute from day one. Why is that, that as a true freshman, you feel comfortable putting him on the field? He's uh He's seasoned. He's played. I mean, everyone looks at him. Like you said, he's a Gatorade player of the year. That's huge. But he's been doing it for a lot of years at Corner Canyon. Um, he's a guy, you know, when you think about, look back at, you know, Dax Milne and Gunnar Romney, for example, they, they played right away as freshmen. And, and they had a lot of experience. Um, and they did that in high school. They were both starters on very successful teams, multiple state championships at a very young age as sophomores. And Cody's the same. He's a very seasoned player that just gets it. He happens to have a great uh, track time attached to him, unbelievable stats. Um, you know, and then just working him out um, at the camps in person, you're able to see that there's more than just speed there. He's got a natural feel for the position. He does things um, that get you really excited as a wide receivers coach that that can be difficult to teach sometimes um, or for someone to adopt. So he's just a really polished receiver that's dynamic. And I, I think he's got a, a great, great chance to play here. And nice thing is he, so mom, his mom, uh, Marcy, came, uh, attended BYU. Dad, Sean went to Utah. That's why I like him. He listens, you know, he's mama's boy. He followed all the right. <laughs> but no, I, Sean, obviously, unbelievable. He's got such great parents. Um, his family's, that family's outstanding. And I'm so, you know, excited and, and thrilled to, uh, to get him whenever he chooses to come. Yeah, let's talk about when uh, a guy like Cody is anticipated to actually make his debut at BYU, because I know there are some moving pieces with prominent receivers that are in the room still. Maybe they're coming back. Uh, Neil Powell, we think, is going. He's going to play in the Hula Bowl. But Gunnar Romney is an interesting one, and Puka Nakua had a breakout season. So what guys are you expecting to come back and maybe delay, Cody, because uh, you got too many people there? Yeah, it, that's kind of it, a lot of these conversations are going to take place right after this bowl game, um, you know, when they can fully just put their mind at ease and, and the season's officially done. So we haven't been super aggressive with some of these guys who, who are on the fence, um, but that does factor into to Cody's decision, as it should anyone who's looking to come play right away. The other thing on the non-football side of things is, is, you know, there's a lot of unknown with the mission you go to and how COVID is still affecting it. You know, there's, there's, there's a, so potentially another year going by, playing a year and, and letting some of that settle a little bit more um, is probably another variable that, that recruits might factor you know, into their decision-making process. We do know he wants to go regardless and he'll be an unbelievable missionary and we're going to be supportive of him. But um, like, you, like you mentioned, there's a lot of factors. And so we're, we're kind of anxious to see uh, how that all plays out. How do your personal wants not get in the way of trying to support some of these guys? Because I look at Gunner and I'm like, hey, I've told him to his face. Selfishly, brother, I hope you are back straight yeah. up but I know you got to do what's best for you. So how do you handle that as a coach? Because you know what a boost 
Gunner would be to the room and to your team next season, but you want to support him. How, how do you handle that? It's a great question, and honestly, it's, it's, it's not a magical answer. I take a step back and I say, if this was my son, how would I approach him? And if, if all the stars have aligned for him to go, then go and go chase your dream and go get what's yours. But if there are multiple things that I feel you need to stay back, that you're gonna you're gonna gain more importantly long term that are gonna help you in your life um, and the success you find long term, then I'm gonna present that before them. Ultimately, like I will never tell a guy um, this is what you need to do, but I will give my strong opinions um, and I'll be supportive no matter what. But that's that's how I've found it to be less conflicting um, or you know battling those selfish issues and desires and saying if this was my son knowing what I know about him um, how would I approach him and that's that's seemed to work out well for me as we transition now to the bowl game scenario and just kind of how crazy the past few weeks have been um, how have you been able to kind of stay in the moment and, and get into bowl preparation when coach Satake Kalani's uh, contract situation was floating out there and you know you got a bowl game opponent coming along and recruiting day and signing day all of these things you have to manage when there's so much so much uncertainty so how how did you manage to to work your way through that and not go crazy fortunately that's something that i think just comes with uh um with experience in this profession. This part of the year is crazy. It's it's uh, no matter what, whether you're you're anxious because your coach could get, an, your boss could get an extension, whether you're anxious because your boss could be terminated, whether you're getting, um, you know, looked at by, it, there's just, it's, it's a crazy time. There's a ton of scenarios and it can be very, very overwhelming. Um, but one thing that helps is you just gotta look at the guarantees I preach the, you know, to my players all the time, and so do our other coaches. You control what you control. That's it. Control the controllables. We did it with this bowl game. That was our message. So it'd be hypocritical for us as coaches to, to let other things outside, you know, um, deter us from the task at hand, which is the bowl game. And so, so fortunately, I, I still, you know, I'll always have room to improve. But as time has gone by, I've I've been able to just block out a lot of the noise and just say, hey. This is the game we got. Let's focus on that and, and shut everything out. So you guys are the ones who make it more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do something. We got to contribute some way. Come on. Yeah, I don't Come knock on. you for it. I don't, I don't knock you for it. You're doing your job. We're doing our job. So <laughs> When you got the official word that Kalani was extended through 2027, what went through your mind? Relief, joy. I know this is where he wants to be. Um, you know, he's... He says it and he means it. BYU is is, is at his heart, and um, you know, I'm just so so lucky on the on the football side of things. It's nice because there's a there's an element of like, ah, oh, good. I, I I can you know I got this job. I don't get content. I know I have to perform and I got to do my part. And so I think, but there, on the football the business side of things, you have the sigh of relief. On the familiar side of things, it's just it's it's I'm very proud and and I, I, obviously I love love that man. I'm so grateful he's at the helm and leading this team. I don't think there's a better person for that. And so just a, a lot of joy and excitement for that. And he deserves it. So from my outside perspective, and I'll be in Shreveport with you as of tomorrow afternoon, but once that hire, or I guess you'd say extension happened for Kalani, I kind of felt like the team was reinvigorated just in the conversations I was having. Uh, what are you feeling and seeing in that regard? Same thing. You know, there was a lot of, I know that was a big thing for him was, was, not letting this be a distraction at such a critical time. And it's, as always, it's just, just thinking about the boys, thinking about the team um, and whatever things need to be worked out. Like I, it's just, it says a lot about him knowing that the, the, the most important thing right now, despite what other, others might think, are these, are these young men in this game. And, uh, and I, I think they, they, they felt a sense of just, you know, peace and relief that, okay, good. He's our guy. He's here, he's here with us. And so you can feel the excitement. You can feel the, the energy. Um, you know, it's a little extra juice that we don't rely on, but it's always nice when it comes your way. And, and you can feel it. There's, there's a, a little pep in everyone's step. So hopefully that shows up on Saturday. Practices from what we've been told have, uh, as you just mentioned, been very intense. Guys are excited to play against another team. There's been some animosity. Um, how would you describe the state of the team right now going into a very interesting game against UAB? I think everyone's everyone's head seems to be in the right place. You know, it's it's. I think there's a little more difficulty sometimes in at the end of the season, game ten or eleven, when when there are games left, but you're but it's still at the end, and you guys are tired. There's a lot you have to 
you have to fight against as, as coaches and, and keeping everything high. You know, this is the last game. There's, there's no other game. And so you can leave the message, like really preach the message of empty the tank. Um, but then you add in the, the, that conflict of just the bowl season, you know, being out, there can be some distractions and whatever, and easy to lose focus for some teams. But our guys are locked in. They know this is our last shot together um, as the 2021 BYU football team, and we got to leave it all out, you know, there. And, and I, I think the guys will respond well to that. I know there's a lot of anticipation out there, as there should be, on, on how this game will go. But we're super excited about these guys, this opponent. It's a good team, and, and uh, we look forward to playing our last game together. Sure, a, a win as a team to kind of put the proverbial cherry on top is always uh, an ideal that you shoot for. I, because I do what I do in the media, uh, kind of laid out some scenarios where I thought, man, BYU could finish as a top 10 team for just the fourth time in program history if they win this game and then a couple of teams above them lose. You could go back-to-back 11-win seasons for the first time in 14 years. BYU hasn't finished back-to-back seasons in the top 11 since Steve Young and Robbie Bosco were the quarterbacks. So how much do those things factor in to try and maybe motivate your guys to get up for, you know, putting that exclamation point on a really fantastic season? We, we get it's a real thing. It's awesome for, for, for fans, for media, as it should be. But like we mentioned earlier, control the controllables. All we can do is focus on this game. What happens after that is, is, is what happens to be determined. And, and our message is just, let's just go play and have fun. And that's the most important thing. We play for each other. We leave it out there. We play a great brand of football. And whatever the, the, the whatever boards out there, ranking committees, the fans, whatever people decide to say at the end is, is great. But uh, we, we got to play, you know, as a team and continue to believe in each other. We'll see what happens. But control the controllables, Spencer. I love that. I'm already writing this down. I'm, I'm, I'm implementing this into my own personal life. Control the controllables. I love it. Okay, before you go, I need to ask you about some bowl game activities. I know there was a big Madden tournament yesterday, and uh, Sol J. Mayava Peters was getting some trash because he was in it late and then didn't come through. That was a game show thing tonight. Uh, there's great Cajun Creole food and Tex-Mex there. What's the best part of Shreveport and all these pregame activities? So, well, we, we coaches, we weren't at that Madden thing. That was just the players. Um, and they're just doing the axe throwing themselves as well. So tonight will be the first thing together as a team is the, the big game show deal. But so far, it's just really in general, it's been the hospitality. You hear about it, um, the Southern hospitality, but it, it, is, it is a real thing. We feel it. Food's been awesome. People have been super, super kind. That sticky, icky weather is awesome. You know, it's, it's nice to feel, you know, a little... Little, little dirty and sticky, and, and we love it. So, um, but it's been awesome. We've enjoyed it. We look forward to a couple more days of festivities, being with the guys and enjoying the hospitality down here. The people are awesome. Fantastic. I'm hoping that the rain doesn't add to the sticky, icky weather on Saturday. But if it does, feel like your team is is okay with some wet conditions there. Control the controllables. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it so much. Here's to Shreveport. I'll see you there tomorrow, Fessy. We appreciate the time, man. Uh, great to catch up with you. Congratulations on an amazing signing class. We look forward to the game on Saturday. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate you, man. Fessy Satake, the wide receivers coach, doing work in recruiting, and uh, he's got to recruit some of the guys back, maybe. That, that's about. what college athletics are now. It's right? not just recruiting guys coming out of high school. It's recruiting your own players back. Well, we'll see this for like three or four more years because of the COVID year. Yeah. The, the COVID extra year, it's like, are you going to use that extra year or not? Uh, in, in the case of, you know, Neil Pau and Gunnar Romney and some of these guys, like you have to recruit them back uh, because they saw Dax Milne get a chance in the NFL. And maybe that's enough of the stars aligning for them to want to go. Who knows? We'll see. Hopefully they come back selfishly. Absolutely. They're it awesome. Makes, it makes BYU better. The more talent you have coming back. But I'd be shocked if all of them did. It's not. It's Let's probably not realistic yeah. that they all come back. Yeah. But, but again, it goes to what he was talking about in terms because I thought the question that Spencer asked was great in terms of how do you handle not want, you know, yeah. putting your own, yeah. you know, uh, thoughts into it and, and letting them make the des- best decision for him. And it's like, you just have to, you have to trust them. You know, you say, this is, this, this is, this was my kid. Yeah. And, and the, do, this yeah. is what's here for you. You need to make the best decision for you and your situation. And I love that. Right. Cause they do care about them beyond what they do at yes. BYU. 100%. Yeah. All right, coming up, Jeff Judkins, head coach of the 8-1 and one BYU women's basketball team. Is he going to Spider-Man tonight? And is the answer to the BYU Hoops big man void already on campus? What? This is BYU Sports Nation.
When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk Enabling global trade for a growing world Get to know the new signees and the best of their social media on the latest BYU SN right now. Check it out on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. He is Jason. I'm Jeremy. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the program. You can always uh, follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok for more content. Let's whip it. Cook Whip Round is presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. All right, is future success for BYU football more dependent on high school signees or the transfer portal? Ooh, good question. I think this could be much more than a, a whip topic. This could be trending. It is both. I think the transfer portal, you are bringing in guys that should play right away and impact. Right. Although, uh, you know, from high school, it's going to be a minute, especially if it's a mission first guy. Literally, like, four years before yep. that player has an impact. So, it's a combination of both, of course. But in the Big 12, BYU will need more ready to play guys out of high school than it has now. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I look at this kind of like you did. If, if for Im immediacy, it's it's the transfer guys because they can come in and play immediately and they've, they've had experience at other places. I still think, though, the lifeblood of any program is still going to be high school signees. That, that's the foundation of your program. You can go and, and find guys to come in and help here and there. But I still, at the end of the day, I think that all programs and certainly a program like BYU will, will be more dependent on, on high school signees and getting those guys in the program, even if they have to wait a while because of missions. Yeah, it, it takes four years for Tyler Algier to become this guy. Right. It takes four years for Jaron Hall to become this guy. So you've really got to be on it. It, yeah, you, it you takes do. a long yep. time. Well, Danny Ainge being back in the NBA helped BYU, and he's local now. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I – I don't know how it would help, but I, I'm not going to say that it, it, it's not going to hurt. Look, it, it's not going to be anything negative that the now CEO of the Utah Jazz is a BYU legend. I, I don't know specifically what role he would have and stuff like that, but, but I'm not going to certainly say that it's a bad thing because it's definitely not. I don't think it affects BYU in any way, shape, or form. I don't. Well, what, is it going to pick a guy because he's a BYU guy now? It's different when it's an undrafted free agent on the 53, in the case of Andy Reid with several BYU guys, and Zane Anderson now, or practice squad Mitch Matthews or Leva Hefo guys. That's different. The NBA, it's, the roster is so much shorter. It's hard to get NBA guys. Maybe in the Big 12, BYU has a couple. Maybe Colin Chandler is a guy like that. But because Danny's at the Jazz, it doesn't mean he's just going to pick a BYU guy. But to me, there's no impact. All right, Puka Nakua tweeted to BYU basketball head coach Mark Pope that he'd send him his number. Uh, is Puka the answer for BYU hoops big man problem right now? Puka like 6'3". 
Puka, Puka says, I'll send you my number. Is serious question. Is Colby Lee available? Can BYU talk to him and, and bring him in? Like, is that... I don't know how a, that works. Is that a thing? I know he, he left, but he didn't transfer anywhere. I happen to know that he is around. Um, that's a question I have. I don't know if the relationship is still good. I don't, I don't know, man. Well, let's go. We need one. On a scale of Independence Bowl, the Big 12 invite. <laughs> how excited are you to have Zane Anderson on the 53 again? Uh, I'm uh, I'm very excited. It would be awesome if BYU's safeties were both Daniels. Or like, or, the Chiefs yes. were both BYU guys. That'd be fun. Sorensen and Zane. I, I would say I'm And a, it would be Danny Ainge to credit for that. And it would, Danny Ainge would yeah, have something to do exactly. with it, of course. Yeah. Um, I would say I'm probably a Tyler Algier football punch. That's where I fall that's, on the scale. That's how excited yeah. in like the yeah. 2021 season storyline. Sure. Yeah, why not? The, the multiverse. In the multiverse? Yeah. Multi versus multi and data versus data. This is a debate we'll have another day. I don't know what I am on that. I am excited for you and Zane. I like Zane. I just want the win. It's like more that's about all, Zane than you. That's but what yeah. I, it's what I just want the win. Whoever's on the field that gives the Chiefs the win and then all likelihood the division type, that's all I care about. So you didn't donate to the GoFundMe with Danny? <laughs> all right. With <laughs> <I'm so stupid. laughs> Ashley Hatch, Michaela Coulihan, and Cameron Tucker in the NWSL, yeah. the National Women's Soccer League. Is that the best Cougar representation in a professional league right now? Uh, no, women's, yes, but overall it's the NFL. BYU it, has a lot of guys in the NFL, has no one in the NBA, but a lot internationally, which is great. I mean, if you go going pound for pound, maybe it's NWSL, um, but the NFL is, is clearly the answer. Yeah, it's it's the NFL. I mean, in, in, in you know, nothing against Coolahan or Tucker, but, the, you know, they haven't played in there yet. Right. But Ashley Hatch does. No, no, uh, Ashley Hatch is, Ashley like Hatch is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. we get Coolahan and Tucker in and we see what they can do because we know how good they are. You know, maybe that starts to change a little bit if they come in and dominate yeah. like Ashley Hatch has done and they're more than capable of doing that. But I agree with you right now. It's the NFL. I would like that because I do think it matters. I think if we ignore, you know, hey, there are no NBA players from BYU right now. I think it because it's inconvenient or negative, we ignore it. It's like, no, let's get a player in there. Let's get some players in there. Let's. But go. I'm also on board if things don't necessarily match the narrative. I'm cool just not right. talking about and it. And I would even argue like WNBA. Let's get Shaylee Gonzalez in there. You when know, Shaylee you know Gonzalez I mean? is there, yes. yeah. Should the following tweet be in consideration for the tweet of the year? At Kook Thunder, a certain group of people I saw on Twitter today, this is last night, might have had their heads explode when the sports segment started on KSL and up pops Spencer Linton talking Danny Ainge. Just BYU on BYU there. Uh, look, I, I, I it's not going to go as far as the tweet of the year, uh, <laughs> but I, I, do, I do take a lot of enjoyment in knowing that that upset a lot of people. That the BYU guy, Spencer, is talking about the BYU guy, Danny Ainge. Yes, that, I, I do enjoy that probably more than I should. That made me laugh. I worked the jazz game last <laughs> night for the Clippers, and I thought, oh, yeah, Spencer why do you hate the right, jazz? right next door. Why do you hate the jazz? You're working Blazers, you're why working they, Clippers. Why do they hate me? They don't, you're working all these other teams that come in I'm to play the jazz. I'm not sitting next to Bowler. I'm sitting next. Hey, whoever will employ, you know, like everyone has their price. <laughs> why do you hate the jazz so much? I hate the jazz. I like the jazz. Mm, says the guy who grew up in Portland. All right, coming up, a rise and shout out to a hamburger. Mm, okay. Delicious. Uh, maybe our next guest is hungry for hamburgers, too. He's always hungry for lots of threes and good defense. He is Jeff Judkins. Joining us to talk BYU and Washington State 8 and 1 battles coming up Saturday. This is BYU Sports Nation. There Look he is. Look alive, Jeff. My buddy, Juddy. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life. When you live at Trio, less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But 
But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. In a competition to win it all, they'll put everything on the line. Nature can be challenging. Elements can be harsh. Tensions can run deep. And sometimes it may seem hopeless, but giving up is never an option. And if they band together as a family, they will always stand a chance. Wow! Because real victory isn't just about surviving together, it's about living together. Watch Survivalists on BYU TV or the free BYU TV app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU plays UAB in the Independence Bowl on what? Saturday, and you can listen to all the coverage on BYU Radio. Cougar pregame live with Ben Bagley and Riley Nelson begins at 1.30 Eastern time. Greg Rubel, Riley will have the call at 3.30 Eastern. I'm calling Weber State. Who? I will be up in uh, Ogden calling BYU basketball at Weber State. Or Utah State. Oh, Weber State. Yeah, Weber that's State, right. yes. That's right, that's yes. right. Uh, now joining us is a, uh, a man we're excited to have back in the studio, especially because he had COVID and he's doing, he's doing well and he's back. It's Jeff Judkins. Welcome back. You doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing great. Feel, good. Feel awesome. Okay, that's good because we were worried there for a minute. <laughs> Jeff Judkins is out. Lee Kamard's kind of running the show, and when Lee's running the show, you never know, right? <laughs> uh, but they got a couple of wins and all is well. Well, like you know, I was really proud of my staff. Um, you know, as a head coach, you you hopefully prepare everybody to do things. You guys deal with it all the time. Somebody can't be here and somebody fills in for you. And, Hi, Shep. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. you know and, and so it was kind of the same thing. But I was I thought my staff did a great job, all of them. Um, it was a team effort. Um, Lee was kind of over it and, and, and everything. Be, part of it because Lee does all the scouting and he kind of knew a lot of things. And I didn't want to change too much with the team. Um, but Ray and Mel and so did an awesome job. And then, of course, the team responded very well. And um, it was hard. I'm not going to kid you. Watching, those, watching the game from home was really hard. Were you yelling at the computer? I wasn't too mad because I, we were playing pretty well. You were playing well. pretty good. We were playing pretty well. Um, uh, but, yeah, I just it, just it just was a bad timing. We had those three games. And, of course, they set a, what, a quarter record for most points in the first quarter. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Lee letting them fire it, away, I guess. Yes, man, they were they were on fire. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, a lot of great, a lot of people sent me a lot of you know te texts and want to know how I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, it was I, I didn't really feel anything, but it was just neat to have people care enough about me. So, so yeah. obviously, you got to watch a lot of really good basketball because your team was winning. Uh, what else did you do to pass the time? You, you get, you're quarantining, so you you got to be away from other people. Yeah. So what are you doing? Well, you know, I, I, I watched a lot of, like I said, film um, of the game. I tried – I didn't really get too involved in calling Lee and saying, here's what I should do. But they did call me and say, hey, where are things you're thinking and, and, and that. Um, you know, just did some things around the house and spent time with my wife. My wife stayed in – quarantine with me also she did not get sick she didn't she didn't get it so and then of course I have my horses I I, I just went down there every morning and fed them and got got out of the house did some exercise and, and did some reading and you know just things to keep myself busy that's awesome Jeff Judkins is on BYU Sports Nation yeah shout out to to Ray and Melanie and Zoe and Lee who kind of handled things uh you had a big game at Oklahoma first loss of the year uh went down to the wire overtime Tegan Grant makes 10 threes yeah. in this game. Lauren Gustin has 21 rebounds. Um, eight and one's pretty good. 16, you're 20th in the, uh, yeah. in the AP poll. Life's still good. Big game with Washington State this weekend. Both teams are eight and one. I mean, yeah, you've been playing some tough games here. Yeah, we've played five straight hard games. Which, All power five. Which is good. I mean, that's what, that's what we wanted to do this year. We felt we could do it with our team, and it was close. Well, Oklahoma was a, was a close game. I, I thought we got a little bit. Which we knew on the road you're going to get some bad calls, but 32 foul shots to your 12, uh, that's a little bit. Especially the overtime, they scored half their points from the foul line, and then, I mean, Tegan might have might have had 12 three pointers. I had to sit it out 15 minutes because of fouls. Mm. So um, 
But a real positive thing. I mean, I thought we played well, had a chance to win. Paisley had a good good look at that last shot and almost made it. But uh, we got a big game, as you mentioned. Jeremy, we got a game with Washington State who beat Gonzaga at Gonzaga. Their only loss was to NC State. So uh, we're going to have our hands full. Well, and you touched on it a second ago. I mean, when you put the schedule together, you knew this was going to be a tough schedule, but you did it on purpose. And you've not shied away from this. This is not the first year that you've had a tough non-conference yeah, schedule. You've done this for years now. But when you do something specifically, because you know the team can handle it, and then you see the team come out and actually perform the way that they have, getting eight wins out of nine, how rewarding is that for you? It's just very rewarding, and it's a very positive thing. Hopefully we can take care of business Saturday. And then we we put ourselves in a good position for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, we have to win our conference and we have to do things, but we at least give us a, a good start. Um, as you mentioned, Jason, I, I'm not afraid to play people. The only mistake we made is we should have probably thrown in maybe a game at home instead of Oklahoma, playing those many games on the road and doing that. But, you know, we learned as a team what we need to do. And uh, this team plays well on the road, so... Um, hopefully we can continue to you know just get better. Nets twenty eight. I mean that's excellent. Yeah, we uh, were twenty two, but yeah. So that but loss. Who's counting? Little... Jeff Judkins is. Uh, no, is I, no, I, no, I, no. I, I have an assistant coach who's very into that, and he makes sure that we know what's going on, and yeah. which is good. You you need to yeah, in, in your sure. scheduling and and all that. Okay, let's talk about uh, the news from the Utah Jazz. Uh, Danny Ainge is the new CEO there, former Celtic guy, a guy you played against uh, yes. at Utah. He was at BYU. What do you remember from those battles where you were uh, – how old were you and how old was I, you? I was a them? senior and he was a freshman. Of course, the freshman we had was Tom Chambers and Danny Vrains. So Not bad. That, that ended up being a really good rivalry when they got older. Danny Ainge, when I remember seeing him play and watch it, he, what a great athlete. What a competitor and what a winner, and that never changed. You know, as a freshman, he he brought that. I, I really was hoping he stay retired and I could maybe talk him into kind of helping me a little bit, but and coming in and watching our team and giving some advice. But he's too knowledgeable in basketball to be sitting around, and so I know he's doing what he wants to do, and that is get involved in basketball again. And he he's been at the majority of the home games. He has. Yeah, he's been a lot great. of our games and. Um, you know, very – that's one thing about him and Steve Young. Some of the great BYU athletes are very, very into following BYU sports. And that's kind of pretty – that's pretty cool when you go to somebody and say, yeah, Steve Young came to our game when we were in San Francisco. Oh, you're kidding, you know. That's that's what BYU is all about. And it's just, just great to have that support. That's awesome. That's super cool. Well, good luck uh, Saturday. You can watch that on the BYU TV app at 2 Eastern time. Yeah, you're calling it. Is I'm calling right? it. Very excited about that. Should be a lot of fun. You going to Spider-Man tonight, by the way? No, I am not. <laughs> I'm, I am going. To, Ray Stewart's daughter is getting married. Oh, congratulations. So I'm going to that. And then I've got to go watch a recruit who's top player. So... You have actual to events to go to. I got some yeah. events to go to. You <laughs> enjoy the movie, you bum. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> All right, coming up, checking your timeline options for BYU football. That was finally categorized correctly on this program. And a rise and shout out to a BYU player feeding fans while helping a good cause. This is BYU Sports Nation. I think we figured out the name of the show today. <laughs> Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to Rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. great communicators. We are expecting to meet as many biological relatives as possible. My navigation skills are going to take us to the winner's box. 
we're just a really uplifting, positive, funny team. <laughs> you know that moment? When you know something big is about to go down, your life's about to change forever. Yeah, that's this moment. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Life-changing, a blessing, and amazing. I've taken family for granted. I don't know what I'm getting myself into. I'm going in without expectation. It's nerve-wracking for yeah. sure. Yeah, but we're ready. Yeah, we're ready. We're ready. This is a total work of heart. This is amazing. Thank you so yeah. much. For some, this line is where the journey starts. For us, it's been the journey of our lives. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is always available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU Radio app. You can also download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. While you're there, subscribe, rate, and review. Our question of the day, if you looked into the multiverse, is there a timeline out there where BYU football makes a New Year's Six game this year? In response, our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Plenty of snow up there now at Cougarstats. Sure, but there would also be a lot of more multiverses where BYU won fewer than 10 games than where they won 10 plus. I agree with that. This is on the higher end, maybe the highest end almost, of what could have happened this year. This was an excellent. Year. I'm glad and we I were on this And I think it's because timeline. of, yes, exactly. The, the margin was so good this year that it really helped BYU get to that 10 number. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that we are currently living life on this timeline but the other awesome. but the other jason jerem spencers and yous <laughs> are in other timelines where BYU may have not won 10 games right what if the other what, not if what the we other version, believe is there a yeah. universe out there where the other versions of us are at the school up north is that is that a, <laughs> is, is that, that a thing ring up? is that a thing <laughs> <laughs> that is a, that is a universe we do not want to go to Today's rise and shoutouts as we quickly ignore that idea are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. How about Tyler Algeri? He's got a new burger. He collaborated with uh, Backdoor uh, Burger to create this new hamburger called The Hammer the in Hammer. honor of the Arizona State uh, play. <laughs> Next Tuesday, December 21st, he'll be serving uh, the burger if you order it. Um, and it, it uh, goes to a good cause as well. A percentage of proceeds will go to the Huntsman Foundation of Cancer Research. Of course, cancer um, has affected Tyler Ogier. If you've seen his Deep Blue, his his grandpa, who was more of a father figure in his life, passed away. So this is a great cause and pretty cool that Tyler is working that NIL. Hopefully he works it to the degree he's coming back next year. Yeah, let's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's certainly hope he comes back. And that burger looks delicious. And it's uh, almost 11 it's, it's it's locally, it's, so burgers, that always Look, we do good. everything on Eastern time. It's more than lunchtime in the East. Are we going to Central time in the Big 12? Because that's where ev almost everybody is. <laughs> I think we have to. Danny Ainge as well, Raz, shout out. Yes, Welcome absolutely. back to Utah. Great deal. Okay, thanks to today's guest, Fessy Satake. And you bum, Jeff Jeff. <laughs> the conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSA. I'm never in a bad mood when I talk to Jeff. He's, the, He's best. the best. For Jason, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Danny Kubik. See you tomorrow, Kiki. <laughs> Solano. Sorry, Dennis. Bye, no Kiki. Time. Go Cougs.